All of which is to say, is it not counterproductive to rail against Islam, calling it the, quote, motherload of bad ideas, when there is no one eternal fixed set of ideas that every single Muslim identifying person will subscribe to that makes them inherently illiberal? And moreover, that to make such crude generalizations against the religion as a whole is only going to alienate moderate Muslims and even push some towards fundamentalism by making them feel their identity is under attack. Okay, so this person makes a grave error from the very first sentence, and that is to conflate the religion of Islam with Muslim individuals. That's two very, very different things. So in order to make it clear for your listeners and for him, because it's it's obvious he doesn't have an understanding of Islam, so I'm assuming that he probably has an understanding of Christianity, so I'm going to put it in the Christian context. If you look at the Old Testament and you look at Christians, you're looking at two very different things. One is an actual document, a set of edicts, a set of stories, a set of, you know, whatever. And the other is, you know, billions of human beings that all practice their religion in different ways. I mean, there are 30,000 different sects of Christianity. It's very difficult when you're talking about Christians to make generalizations because there are so many of them. And the same is true with Muslims. There are, you know, close to 2 billion Muslims. They all live very different lives. They all practice their religion to varying degrees and in different ways. And they all have different cultures and their culture informs their religion and yada, yada, yada. And then there's the doctrine itself. So there's the Old Testament or there's the Quran. If you look at the Old Testament, The people who are following it by the letter, somebody like the Westboro Baptist Church, for example, those are those are people that are that are following it exactly. But most Christians don't follow it exactly. Now, the Quran in in the the way that the Quran differs from the Old Testament is that the Quran is supposed to be the literal word of Allah. So as opposed to the Bible, it's not. A collection of stories. It is the literal word of Allah straight from his mouth. Right. You know, not so he it's kind of a a very ancient game of telephone. So he said it to Gabriel, and then Gabriel said it to Muhammad, and then Muhammad right. said it to his scribe, and then they wrote it down. Okay. So yeah, so that's the difference is is that um that person was conflating the religion of Islam with Muslim people, and you you can't conflate those two. And so when he was talking about Sam Harris, so Sam Harris said that Islam, the religion, is the mother load of bad ideas, and he was absolutely correct in saying that. He is not saying all Muslims follow the religion of Islam to the letter. He's not saying all Muslims are the Westboro Baptist Church of the Christians. But what he's saying is this doctrine is full of bad ideas, full of bad ideas. And so when individuals choose to follow the bad ideas in that religion, that's dangerous and that's something that we need to speak up against. So when Islam teaches that gay people should be killed Mm. and the way they should be killed is they should be thrown off the highest rooftop we need to speak up against that right when islam teaches that anyone who leaves his religion or her religion should be killed we need to speak up against that so you know you can't consider yourself to be progressive or to be liberal and then to say i support freedom of thought except for people born in the middle east and north africa for them if they decide to use their brains I'm okay with them being executed because otherwise I'd be an Islamophobe. Mm. So Sam Harris is being a human being with integrity and he is not treating Muslims any different than he treats any other human beings. Sam Harris brought me to tears in his TED talk from 2010 
because it was the first time that I had ever seen anybody talk about us as Muslim girls as if we were equal to and the same as any other girls on the planet. The example he gave was when he talked about, we see girls covered in burqas in Afghanistan. We see those girls not being allowed to go to school and we turn our eyes in the other direction and we ignore it. But when we see girls who are being forced into marriages with the, the Latter-day Saints, the FBI go in there and they save those girls mm. and they give them their freedom back. We understand those girls have been indoctrinated. They didn't want to marry this 50-year-old man, even though they say they did, even though they say they love their pastel dresses, right? Yeah. We yeah. Under, but, but we don't treat these young Afghani girls the same way we treat these young white girls. We see them as two inherently different human beings. Sam Harris does not. He recognizes that we're all human beings and that we all deserve freedom and that mm. we should all be treated equally. And that's something that, that I hope that listener will, will meditate on that. He'll ruminate on that and consider what is it about a gay Muslim person that he thinks that that person deserves to be killed, but a gay American should get all of the freedoms? Like, wh why? Or a, or a gay Christian should be allowed to practice their faith and be gay. Why can't gay Muslims do that too? You know, why, why do you have two sets of rules for humanity? Aren't we all the same? That was really great. Thank you so much for your time with, with all of this. Yeah, and I'd also recommend that that person listen to my podcast with Sam Harris okay. because that was one of my very favorite podcasts. I mean, I absolutely adore Sam. And I was so comfortable in that conversation with him because he came over to my friend's house and we were sitting in her living room and it was, I forgot that I was even speaking into a microphone. And so it is the most um, candid I've ever been, the most comfortable I've ever yeah. been. And, um, you know, I think it's, it might help your listener to understand some of the nuances that were clearly missing from just asking that question, yeah. that there's a lot of things he doesn't understand about Islam and more specifically that he doesn't understand about Sam yeah. Harris at all. You're not saying you enjoyed Sam Harris's podcast more than my one, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> Not just at checking. all. Hopefully, hopefully from the, it's just that that, that, yeah. <laughs> that the, the idea of, of yeah. treating us all equally, regardless of, you know, if you're women from this country or from that country, I talk about that a lot mm. in my podcast with Sam. So mm. that's why I'm plugging another podcast <laughs> on your podcast, <laughs> which is probably uncouth. <laughs> no, no, of course it's not. It's of course it's, of course it's not. He's, 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 you know, one of the great thinkers of our time probably i don't think it's an exaggeration Absolutely. to say that so he's yeah. he's really fascinating and interesting and I, and I imagine a lot of listeners to this podcast probably do already listen to to sam harris's yeah. one as well yeah. so no i would definitely recommend people check that out as well because he he is good not as fun as me but he was that's what i'm <laughs> taking issue with it's the fun or the sort of feeling at, at home but then he gets to he gets to, he got to see you in person whereas i have to do this camera screen thing which is never yeah, as personal COVID. Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, yeah, no. Ser seriously, thank you so much. This is this is a really great episode, and and you, you've you've been brilliant. Thank you for coming on this. Thank you so much. It was my absolute pleasure. I loved it. It was my very first podcast of 2021, so it's a it's a great way to start the year. Yeah, fuck you, Sam Harris. <laughs> <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't have that. How many podcasts has he done with you in 2021? Zero. <laughs> you win, Andrew. You win.